Okay. Kumlen la black mother. Today is after that kuf you test on the Aleph. Aisha Basa, the final painting from Sati Ramas. Mishnah says, Aisha Shahola Baila with Sarasa Lamadina Siyam. A woman that she and sorry, her husband and her co-wife went overseas. Now remember, we learned before that one co-wife cannot give aidus regarding another co-wife, according to the Tana of Hachamim. And there's a possibility there's a Tana who argues on that. So Aisha, woman, Shahola Baila with Sarasa Siyam. They went overseas, which means when they left, the chazaka was that um, they that um, they were childless. So right now the chazaka is, if her husband passes away, she will have to marry her brother. That was the chazaka. So the woman, so the top of the page, a woman, her, her husband and her co-wife went overseas. Although, you know, came back, and people came back and said to her, you should know, amaze by the, uh, your husband died. So what happens now? The question is, the co-wife, did she have a child? Did she fall pregnant while they were overseas and have a child or will have a child? And therefore, there's, uh, there's no mitzvah of evil. Or they remained childless and there's still mitzvah of evil since you cannot marry anybody else. So what you should do, Loitina says she cannot marry anybody else. The latest you have no can she marry her brother-in-law because it could be that the woman fell pregnant and therefore she cannot marry her brother-in-law. Um, so then the obvious question is, why can't you just marry people outside? And maybe she did not have children. Why can't we just do chalitza? And this way, you know, we take care of all possibilities. Then we will discuss that. Agitate until you know. Shemum We're concerned that maybe she fell pregnant and therefore you're forbidden to your brother-in-law. Same story. What about her mother-in-law? In in other words, the mother-in-law went overseas. The mother-in-law, there, there was no brother, no sibling. So at this juncture, when the mother-in-law went, went overseas, um, there was no midst of Yibu. Why? Because no brothers-in-law. And now then, um, and then, and then she died, whatever it is. <clears throat> Question is, did she fall pregnant and he give birth to a child? So now you have a brother-in-law. So if your husband, if this woman's husband dies, she now has to wait for the brother-in-law to get Khalid, so Yibu, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Now, there's a big difference between the tsara's giving birth and the and the mother-in-law. If the tsara gives birth, we don't care if it's a male or a female. There are three possibilities. Either she miscarried, if she gave, if most women fall pregnant give birth. So either she had a miscarriage, which is a minority, or she had, if she did have a surviving child, a 50-50% chance it was a boy or a girl. And as far as Ibn is concerned, if there was a boy or a girl, there's no longer a mitzvah yama because you're, you're no longer childless. But as far as the mother-in-law is concerned, you're worried that you had a son and therefore, you you have a brother-in-law that you have to wait for, and that's far less chance because it's less than half. The person maybe she miscarried, and even if she didn't miscarry, half of them are boys and half of them are girls. So it's less than fifty percent chance. In the case of the chamois, ain't Then we are not worried at all because it's a smaller chance. It's a meat. The chance of meat that there's a problem because even if she fell pregnant, she gave birth. It could have been a girl, not a boy. So you want to yeah. Um, but what happens if the mother law went and she was already pregnant? Then then we are worried. Then we are worried that maybe it's, 50, it's a 50% chance that's a boy. The mother will explain a little why we're worried in this case, because you can say the same thing. Maybe, you know, might, she might miscarry, but even, or even if she has a child, it might be a girl. Nevertheless, this time we are worried. The Shula says, we're not worried. Um, why? Because for the reason we just said, maybe she miscarried, and even if she didn't miscarry, it might be a girl. Okay, says so the my he taras um it says that this is a tsaram. What do you mean by that? How kamashla come teach you the hot tsara the khashinan abul tsara khalita la khashinan. There's another concern. How do you know that he didn't take on another wife? If let's say um if Adam come along and say, Well, the co-wife went together and she did not fall pregnant. Fine, but if you want to be chayshish, what happened? Should we be chayshish that maybe while he was overseas, he married a third wife, and and the, and that person there, um, you know, and, and so on and so forth, <clears throat> and and so therefore we need to know. So he says we're not worried about it that far to say that, he, that maybe he married another woman. That we are not worried about at all. Okay, let's think about it further. Leitus nasei leitus yavim. Okay, so we're not worried that maybe she married another wife and she fell pregnant. So they forget your also to the other. No, if Aiden come along and say that this Sarah that she, he left with is, did not become pregnant, then she can go ahead and marry her brother-in-law. 
or the Chalitza one another. And we just said, like, you know, so we said, Bishle, we understand why we don't let her to be Miyabim because maybe the co wife fell pregnant and therefore you cannot marry your brother in law to the sort of Asia's off, your brother's wife. The deal, Mommy Abra, Uka Pogba, so maybe she fell pregnant and now you're marrying, and, and this guy will be marrying his brother's wife. Which is also in the Torah. There's no mitzvah yibum there because it was a child. And the like to not say, "Am I?" Uh, <clears throat> but why do you say that you cannot marry people? Uh, okay, she's not tied to run, but you're also not letting her marry anybody, any strangers either. Why not? Am I? Why not? Let's make the assumption we always follow the majority probability. The laws of probability tell us that she did fall pregnant, and the laws of probability told us that she had a child. So if she had a child, then there's no mitzvah yibum anymore, and she's free to go. Why are we being machmed here and saying, but you cannot marry anybody else out there as well? What are we worried about? The vast majority of women, will, or young women, will fall pregnant and will have a child. doesn't matter, boy or girl, when it comes to the mitzvah of yibum that says it's a child, the family is not childless. The rabbi not is the others. Most have fall pregnant and give birth. Lamos, so possibly the only answer is that I made it. Our mission, the author mission is a mayor. And we learned this already a number of occasions. The Chayish Lemute, a mayor is always concerned also about the mute, also about the minority. Take that consideration. In other words, it could be that, could be that what, that there was a, that we follow the minority that maybe it was a miscarriage, even though the, the chances of that are far less likely, but it could be to happen. And therefore, they're still childless. And she cannot marry anybody outside. As the Gemara, no, I cannot, and to say that, it would be difficult because the Stam Mishnah to say you follow the minority opinion of mayor, which follows the minority, is difficult unless you have no choice. Says the Lavdafka. I told him Rabban. Perhaps we can say it's Rabban. Ki Azi Rabban and Basarubam. There's two kinds of raves. There's a rave the east of the Kaman, and there's a rave the lesser Kaman. There are two kinds of raves, which means. There's a rave where you have, as Mara explained, you have nine stores that sell kosher meat and one store that sells non-kosher meat. Now, if you walked into a store and you don't remember which store you bought it from, we're learning more, we're learning more service as well there, that's called Kavua. Since the suffix started at a fixed place, and we have a rule called Kavua, anything which is fixed is like half and half, 50-50, and therefore it's price. But if you found it out in the street, Benimza, most stores are kosher, so we'll assume that this meat that you found in the street came from the kosher store. That's called a ruba di isa kaman. The rave is present right in front of us. And um, then there's another rave called ruba lesa kaman, a general rule. We have this, you know, it's axiomatic that this, this is how it works, as we're going to see that most, most people, most kids, do not turn out to be sterile when they grow up, or most girls do not become islands of garam when they grow up, they, they become fertile. That's called a general rule or a rule that half of boys and half of girls. These are rules. That's called a ruba de lesikama. There's actually a machlek nachrani, which is stronger, a ruba de isikama and a ruba de lesikama. So the Gemara right now thinks that perhaps when does a rabmeyer, um, 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 when do the rabbanon say that we follow a rave only if the rave is in front of us? It's a strong rave, it's right in front of us. But if it's just a general rule, not in front of us, it's much weaker. <clears throat> and therefore, maybe they the Chacham and Mighty look after the meat. So here also, you're telling me a rule that most women fall pregnant and have children. That's not in front of us. That's just a general rule. Maybe the Chacham and Mighty, they were also concerned about the meat. The logic of Ruba Disa Kaman is the Machlik is Whether it's a, a logical thing, it's a beer, because the majority of the stores are kosher. You found a piece of meat. Logic says that it came from the majority. Or is it a halachic thing? It's not a majority, it's a halachic thing. And therefore, um, uh, there's no logic to it. And the third opinion is that the rave is in front of us, but so is the meat in front of us. It's like a mixture. And we know that the rule by a mixture is it's called taruvas. So and taruvas, we know you follow after the majority. Where do you know if it's exerts a cost or where do you know it from? Because it says, you follow the majority. So therefore, it's a, it's a rule. And the same argument applies to Ruba the Lesser Kaman. Now, there are others who argue that Ruba the Lesser Kaman is most is stronger than Ruba the Kaman for a different, exactly the opposite reason. Because just like Ruba Disa come on, the rave is in front of us, it's so strong, but the meat is also in front of us. The fact is, there's one store that sells tray for here. That's a problem. In the Ruba de Lesse come on, the meat is not here at all. And, and, and the, the result is as follows. The question is, okay, we follow Roy. How do we understand when we follow Roy? Is it chat? That Roy is not 100%. Probability is not 100%. But the title says probability is good enough. Is that pshat? Is rave like a suffix? But the Torah says this kind of a suffix, not 100%, is good enough. Or does rave make it a vada? Rave says, no, nope, because probability is so, we can say definitely that is how it is. 
how do we understand uh, a roiv? And in a way, in Ruba, the, in Ruba the Isa come on, it's a bit hard to say that the roiv makes it 100%. There's a trade for store right there. I can say 100% this came from the culture stores. So therefore, they, the, the rush says in Bambatia there that it's only a suffix, a strong suffix that the probability, but probability, the Taylor says, this kind of probability is good enough. When it comes to Ruba the Lesser come on, it's easier to understand in logic that the roiv is actually a vada because the meat is not in front of us. So therefore, if we say that the rule is that most women fall pregnant and give birth to children, it's like, a, well, we'll say it without knowing, we'll say it's 100% that she gave birth. We can say it 100% because the miyut is not in front of us. So therefore, there's nothing directly contradicting the, the, the assumption that it's 100% that she had a child. Anyway, so now think about what I want to say, that even the Rabbonin will agree when it comes to a general rule, Ruben Lassa, come on, maybe we, um, what do you call it? Uh, we are, we are, um, when do Rabbanon say that we don't follow the meat when there's a Ruba Lassa come on? Because the meat is not in front of us. But maybe a Ruba Lassa come on, the meat is in front of us, Rabbanon agree, we're worried about the meat. And the more explains. When, yeah, I feel different about key as Rabbanon was Ruba Lassa, when do Rabbanon follow the Ruba Ruba Lassa come on when the Ruba is in front of us? He going to teach you, for St. Hedry, have a Ruba Lassa come on, maybe, right now, the more says, the Ruba Lassa come on is much weaker. Maybe a Ruben lesser command is much weaker, and therefore a Ruben lesser command, the Rabbana don't follow that rave. It's a weak rave. When the rave, nine stores are in front of us selling kosher, that's the rave is right in front of us, they, rather than just a, 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 a universal rule. Universal rules, you know, are more like fluff. This is a fact. Nine kosher stores. So Rabbana say the rave is very strong. We ignore the meat. That's one vantage point from one perspective. And but Ruben the less like the nine stores, or the case of, of judges, two judges versus one, or the twelve versus eleven. You have the majority right in front of you, so we follow the majority the minority is non-existent. Um, when it comes to a general universal rules, like also a weak rave, and Rabban don't follow that kind of rave. Maybe Rabban will agree, how Mishnah should be the Rabban, we're talking about universal rules. So the Gemara says, what do you mean? But he caught the Tana, I'll prove it to you, you're not right. That the main argument of the, in fact, where does Ramea say, he said, when it comes to the Kusim, the nation of Kusim, he says that we treat them all like um, Gedi Aroi, false Gedi. Why? Because they caught a handful of these Kusim going to Hargarizim and worshiping an idol. And because of, and they were only a meat. And yet, that meat was sufficient to take the entire tribe of Kusim and treat them as if they were Goyim. So we see the mayor holds the opinion of, um, what do you call it? Uh, so the Gemara says, but I, I'll prove it to you that you're not right. I caught the Tanya when it comes to a young boy, young girl, we learned before, the Ruben, and we learned that one of the Mayor says that they cannot give, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Yibum. Why not? Because maybe it'll turn out to be sterile, or maybe she'll turn out to be barren. Majority girls or boys are not that way. But yet the mayor is worried about it. So we see the mayor is worried about Miyuta. And that's a universal rule. The child in front of us, yeah, yeah, no, no, we don't know. Um, more explains. But the cotton mctana, the rubit lazy gamani, that's just a universal rule. But also the rabbana was but even then the rabbana followed the rave. So we see that the rabbana make no distinction between rubit the isa come on, rubit come on. Based on the fact that we make no distinction, therefore the achraim argues someone say rubit lazy come on is stronger than rubit come on because the meat is not here either. The time we learn cotton mctana, loichel to let me have me no cotton mctana. They don't give chlitz in order to do yibum divir amir. Well, it's well what you said. In Chalitzi, that we don't give Chalitz, we agree with you that Chalitzi they cannot give, but not for the reason you said. Because each cost of the Pasha, it says in the Pasha, it says each that who's the one that if the man doesn't want to take the Yivam, so on and so forth, and therefore we can we equate a Isha to Ish. So therefore, it has to be over uh, uh, be an adult. <coughs> Why can't they get married? Even though generally a couple cannot marry, but here that's when you're marrying on your own accord. Here the Taita made this marriage, this Shidduch. So therefore it should work. And we had before Minash Mayim. Umbalahem cotton, he responded. A cotton shall be about the service, turns my turn of sterile, sterile, town is about the islands. The nymphs are poking in the air, comes out they're coming, they're getting married for no reason because then they cannot have children. So and then so we see Rabban Sabri, Rabban hold no. Zilbas are Ruben Rektani, but Rektani loves this. You know, most boys are not sterile. Zilbas are Rektani for most girls. Rektani is love islands. The most girls are not barren. So we see that Rabban hold. You always follow right. So how come our Mishnah says that she cannot marry uh, other people because maybe, maybe um, she miscarried and she didn't have any children. That's only a meat. 
So it must be the author of our Mishnah is a maid. And the Machavarta, let's make it clear, must this is a maid. Our Mishnah is a maid. Says the Gemara, he came to say, what do you want to tell me? Our Mishnah follows a maid. You worry about Muta. So tell me the next case. The Mishnah aim is safer. Says the Mishnah, Hoysel Chamait had a model, um, and she went uh, overseas childless. And the children are worried about she that she what she fell, she gave her, she fell pregnant, and she gave birth. Because even she gave birth, first of course, she miscarried, and even she gave birth, 50% of the girls, and girls therefore are, uh, don't, it's not an issue. Talk about a brother in law. Is only issue. So it means that the, the chance of being a boy is less than 50%. And that's why we go after the majority and therefore she's permitted. But you're telling that me that we're going to go to a mayor who worries about the minority. There's a minority chance that's a boy. So therefore, the khayda, she should be ushered to, to find out whether she gave birth a boy and so on. Amai, halakha, khayda, she could follow the majority women, but I know she misapres, the yod, the, most women fall pregnant and give birth. Me, my pillars, some of them fall and give pregnant. The whole yod is machtas, khayda, machtas, khayda, even she gave birth at 50 50. Smaich muted the map pillars, the machtas, and the kavas. And the reason, the logic behind this, then if you take the minority, the, the, the unlikely thing that maybe she uh, she miscarried, let's say one or two percent of women miscarries, at least 98 percent. Of the women will give birth, but 49% of that are boys, 49% of that are girls. So you take the 2% of miscarriage and the 49% of girls, a 51% chance that there's no issue with this woman that she has to worry about a brother in law. There's no brother in law. But according to May, we're worried about the meat. 49% chance there is a boy there. So she should not be able to get married. The Mahti came out with Yuta, the Lechid, let's worry. Um, but according to May, let's worry. Says the Gemara, um, the reason why we're not worried is. <clears throat> Um, um, so my answer, Dilma, Kivan, Ichzagulashuk. Over here, she, you have a Chazaka. When this mother in law left town, there were no children. And because when this mother in law left town, th there were no children. So therefore, the Chazaka was at the moment of Ibn. So now we add to the Chazaka. Um, so now that you have a right that says that even now, if she gave birth, it's probably a girl or she miscarried. And together with the Chazaka that supports it, the Rabbi right Chazaka supports it. Therefore, Lechai, you're not worried. That even the Ramey is not worried about a Meyut in this case over here because you have the Chazaka that says that she does not have Mitzvah Yibam. Says the Gemara, Kibin the Echzigal Shoy, Kibin the Echzigal Shuk, the Fall of Chayna worried. Says the Gemara, if so, then Reisha, the very first case of the Mishnah, when your co wife and your husband went overseas and she was not pregnant, the Chazaka is. That there is a myth of Yibum, this Chazik Yibum. So, according to you, you're saying that if the Miyat goes against Chazak, even a man agrees with Bruno the Miyat. So, in this case, first case of the Mishnah, we should have that the woman, when she goes to a uh, when they go overseas, she should be able to marry the brother when they, the brother law, because the Chazak had said before they left overseas that if they if, if he passed away to a childless, he'll marry the marry the brother law. And now you're telling me that what well, that there's a uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, um, a meat and so on and so forth. So what? We take the chazaka, the chazaka that you marry of them, the cha and then we don't worry about the meat. And together, we should say that you can go ahead and marry the brother as well. <clears throat> the reason is they should eat the chorus if, if, if you wanted to marry the brother in law. If by, by law, they're not allowed to marry the brother in law, there's an issue of chorus involved. Because if the if the if the if the co-wife gave birth, you have no right to marry brother. If you do, it needs a chorus. So Hoshu, we are very worried, even for a meat, even if it's against the chazak. But say for uh, where you're talking about that she's free to marry somebody outside of the family. And let's say she should not have married, all she did was an Easter of a love. It's a love, the Hoshu, we were not worried. We're not worried. <clears throat> um <clears throat> Um, what's the difference when we have a gzera? So we say there's a difference how severe the, you know, the avera is before we make a gzera, we don't make a gzera. Over here, we're talking guys of a suffolk, not because of a gzera. There's a suffolk whether she, she's a lot, the, the, the woman fell pregnant, and gave birth, or didn't give birth. So because there is a suffolk, when it comes to a suffolk, the din is suffolk mahatayra the khumra. In other words, is, it, it, it seems that Rashi is saying here, but you want to saying it. There's a big argument in the Rambam, the Rash, but whenever we have a suffix in the Torah, we take the stringent side. Is that goofy from the Torah? That's from the Rabbam. If you learn that suffix Mahat Torah is Mahat Torah the Khumra, then it makes no difference. That's what we're saying. You seem to be saying it. What's the difference if it's a Isa Kharis and Isa Lab? If the Torah says whenever there's a suffix in the Torah, you have to be Machmer, then you always have to be Machmer. So why in the Reisha are you Machmer the Seifin and Machmer? But if you learn that something Mahat Torah is, is mid Rabbana Luchumra, then you can start saying, well, Rabbana will machmer by something Torah only with his Nisar Karis. 
but not with his niece of love. And maybe that's the, 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 the discussion of the here. First, the Gemara thought that something matter is only with Rabban and Luchumra, so the Gemara wants to make a distinction between Karis and love. And the Gemara says, no, the Gemara includes that no, something matter is Luchumra. What's the difference? Ella, what else is Rav? Reisha, I'll tell you very simply. Reisha, in the Reisha, Chazaka, Liyibum, in the Reisha, the Chazaka world, before they left town, that they were childless, she's going to marry the brother in law. And what happens? And the uh, and say therefore, and the rave says that what the rave says that the rave chances that she gave birth, and therefore she does not have to marry the brother in law, right? So, therefore, you have the chazaka saying one thing and the rave contradicting it. The chazaka saying, Marry your brother in law. The rave says, No, 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 there's a child, you cannot marry the brother in law. And when you have a rave and a chazaka, in fact, the Imara Khuli said that a rave is stronger than a chazaka, we learned it up your off. So, then, so there's a rave versus a chazaka, and therefore, we say, You know what, if we don't know which way to go. Cannot marry, can do anything. The, um, here, the Chazaka says, marry brother law. The Ruba says, the Shuk, that you gave birth and therefore you cannot, you don't marry your brother, you marry anybody else. The Chazaka, the other Kiruba, Chazaka is not as strong as the Rai. And therefore, the icy Miuta de Mapilis comes along, this is of Mayor, comes along the Miut that maybe there was a, a, a miscarriage, and because there's a miscarriage as well. Um, therefore, that perhaps she didn't give birth, even though they give birth, but maybe there's a miscarriage or for pregnant, maybe there's a miscarriage, so therefore you're still bound to your brother in law. And you add Samay Chazaki, you take the Chazaki that was in force, it itself on its own is not so strong. But if you add the meat of women that, that, that you have abortions and you add it to Chazaki, suddenly Chazaki is strengthened. We treat it like half and half, and therefore she cannot marry a brother in law, but nor can she marry any outsiders. Can you marry any outsiders as well? Um, so like to not say this, yeah, that's why we say she's instead of limbo. However, safer uh, when the, the mother law that the Chazaka was that there was no brother in law, therefore she's permitted to marry in the marketplace. Chazaka the shook. And then the Rav says as what well, the Rav says that either it was a girl or she miscarried. So the Rav also says that she's a free woman. So the Rav and the Chazaka reinforce each other. The Ruba the shook. The Havalis Chodim, Miyuta the Miyuta. So therefore Chodim now becomes a Miyut of a Miyut. Because uh, Chazak itself says it, that you're a free woman, that you left out it. So the, the Scharim is, is that first of all, could be she miscarried. And even if she didn't miscarry, it could be it's a girl. So like a double meat. Even a mayor says such a case, you have the Chazak and the Rebbe supporting each other, and the meat is weak, then it doesn't override it. And everybody agrees. Even a mayor agrees in the safer that she's a free woman. She should not marry, nor she should be Abim. It seems it seems like this is forever. <clears throat> Uh, the rights of the husband that uh, died, she cannot marry, no can she be So you want to ask, uh, will the this forever? Why doesn't she just get a chalitza? And that's it. it sounds like you make it also forever. Why? Why can't she just get a chalitza? Uh, and, and we say manashach. If, if uh, the, 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 she did not become pregnant, she's married to brother-in-law, she got a chalitza to brother-in-law. And if she did fall pregnant, so there's no yibam at all. So what's the chalitza doesn't count? Doesn't matter, I'm free anyway. So look, why don't we just give her chalitza? Why do we make uh, keep her instead of limbo? So you might have, oh, you're right. La atma for herself, so Khadash in the rule. We learned a long time ago that any time that that there's a this situation, the husband dies, she has to wait three months. I want to make a rule, it's unequivocal. We don't care if she's an older woman, we don't care if she's not able to bear children. The, the, the basis of the reason is because we need to determine the child's from the first husband and the second husband. But as a result of that, we made it ubiquitous. Because it, it, it universal applies everywhere, to all women. Okay. So in three months, we understand. Le Chavitum. Uh, what do you call it? So for herself, it's three months. And the Chavita, because of the co-wife, that maybe she felt pregnant, let's wait nine months and see whether she has a child or whether she will um, uh, she will miscarry. <clears throat> um, because even if she gets a Chalitza, she has to wait nine months. Why? Because maybe there'll be a child over there. And uh, and, then, and and if there is a child over there, then Chalitza doesn't do anything. It's the child that, get, that exempts her. And But the thing is, the child cannot exempt her until he's actually born. Or she's actually born. So therefore, you have to wait nine months for the possibility of the child. And then once the moment is the possibility of the child, Chalitza is useless. But um, you'll be free once there's a child. But you have to wait till the child gives birth. Okay, so you got to wait nine months because a total of nine months. So three for this, another six months for that. Fine. And the Chalitza Manashach, and according to this, according to, um, according to them, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Chalitza Manashach, then she gets Chalitza Manashach. Right? I, if, if, if there's no child, okay, so they had to marry the brother of Chalitza. If there was a child, the Chalitza doesn't do anything. However, a Bai Barov, the Barov, and says, no, unfortunately for her, we won't give her a Chalitza at all. And she's stuck. Why is that? Ambi Tavai Bosei, Gzeda, we are worried. Maybe there will be a child. Maybe there will be a child. 
And so what's wrong? And there will be a child. And the reason why she's, she's free is not because of the, the chalitza. She's free because of the child. Now, there's a big difference why she's free. If she's free because of chalitza, she cannot marry a coin because the chalitza with Rabbana is treated like a divorce. If she's free because of the child, she can marry anybody. So initially, when we gave a chalitza, everyone knew she cannot marry a coin. Now that she's totally free, we need to tell people that she can marry a coin. So we have to change the, 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 the laws, and that's difficult to do. So the order, the nimtza, at the machiz, to the guna. Now you'll have to make an announcement that everyone says, no, that she's able to marry a coin now. So the order, what's a big deal? So do that. No, we're worried. It might be people who heard about the chalitza, so they know that she's a chalitza now. They weren't there the second announcement, and then they see her married a coin one day. What are they going to think? They'll assume that a chalitza can marry a coin. They'll think that a chalitza can marry a coin. And therefore, we decided not to let her. In this situation, unfortunately, she's in the state of limbo. Says the Gemara. Uh, I'm asked a question, nah, and it says in the Mishnah, which we learned before, neatly ben b'minasiyam. If she says she left with no children, so she had a chazaka that she's allowed to marry her, she will marry her brother. <clears throat> then she said, I had a son overseas, but for Amr, she says, mes b'ni my son died first. In other words, I'm back to the same situation. I'm a yivam. The man should believe. But if she says, mes b'ili says, my husband died first, and then my son died. Which means a what? That I, I I have no mitzvah of yibum because my, my husband predeceased our son. So what do we do? We don't, so we believe her, we don't believe her. So we say we say that what she cannot marry a brother because she's saying clearly that I'm not allowed to marry yibum. But we don't let her marry anybody outside because maybe her maybe she's not we cannot be believed. So therefore we make her get a chalitza, uh, make her get chalitza according to her testimony. She's saying I cannot live with anybody else because my son outlived my husband. So she needs a chalitza. Now, why are we worried over there as well? What should we worry about? We listen to her words. And my question is, why do we worry? What happens if tomorrow two words come along and tell us, yes, exactly what happened? Her son outlived her husband, which means the chalitza was rendered useless. And why is she a free woman? Because she had a son. So when she got the chalitza, everybody thought she cannot marry a coin. Then when the Adim come along, they say that what? That her son outlived the husband, which means that what? That her, that she can now marry a, she can marry anybody. So why aren't we worried? She'll marry a coin. People say, wait, they heard the first announcement, not the second one, and they'll all assume that she, a uh, chalitza, allowed to marry a coin. What's the difference? It's obvious that we're not worried about that. Says, so, in the second announcement, I'm at a papa. Big Rusha. A papa says that din over there where we say she receives a chalitza because of, because of her words is talking about a woman who's divorced who so anyway cannot marry a coin. So nothing can go wrong. Rabhia and Bere Rabhuna Amar Rabhia Rabhuna says, you know what? It's talking about but Amr Ani Vuhu Nech Be'en Le Talking about a limited case where she said we were hiding in the cave, so there's no possibility for, for witness to come. Therefore, we're not worried that the witness will come, and that's why over there we say, go ahead and get a chalitza. Mishnah. Today, Yevamis, we learned <clears throat> the five people are not believe to each other, and one of them is a sister in law and a sister in law, because uh, each one thinks that what happens if the husband passes away um, and childless, she's going to end up becoming my co wife and we're going to be competing. So already they don't they have this sus creeping suspicion or they don't really uh, trust each other. So what happened? Today, Yevamis, two women, two sister in law, they came back from overseas. And Zu Aimedes, one sister law says, Mez Bali, my husband died. My husband died. Uh, let's say Lay was married to Ruben and Rachel was married to Shimon. They both came back and they both said, um, the Leia said, My husband died. But Zu Aimedes, but they both say the husband died, right? So um, so each one now has the mitzvah of Yibu. But each, but each one, the, the only other brother was the one that the other woman said died. So what happened in this case? We believe them regarding themselves. We don't believe them regarding their sister in law. So when <laughs> Rachel, Shimon's wife, says that Shimon died, we don't believe her as far as Reuben's wife Leah is concerned. So Leah says, My husband died. I'm a Yavama. But, she, um, but uh, what should she do? She, she only has one brother in law, Shimon. And, and, uh, and Rachel said that Shimon has died. But we don't trust Rachel as far as Leah is concerned. I. Rachel herself will, will, will be messed up now. She thinks Thomas Nafshi and pleased him. Um, so, they, so now Reuben's wife is stuck. She cannot marry anybody else because Shimon might be alive. Go find Shimon. 
Um, what happens to zoo Adam, zoo Adam, Adam? Here's interesting logic here. So let's say, let's say um, Reuven's wife has witnesses that Reuven died. And uh, Lazu and Adam, but Shimon's wife has no witness that Shimon died. So what would you think in this case here? So you would think that Reuben's wife is free and Shimon's wife is not. It's not the way around. Shimon's wife is free because Rachel has believed that her husband died. And now if she's not witness that Reuben is dead as well, she's a free woman. But Reuben's wife, and, and now that we know that Reuben is, is dead because of the Adam as well, she now has to wait for Shimon because we don't know if Shimon's alive or not. I, Rachel, said he's dead. We don't trust him because she might be hurting her sister-in-law. So, um, what about Luzu Bonim? Luzu Ain Bonim? What about if, let's say, one of them had children and one of them did not have children? So, Reuven had children. So, the, she has no Mitzvibum. And Shimon's wife had no children. So, she has a Mitzvibum. And they both say that the husband died. As she yesh Bonim, it's obvious. So, Reuven's wife, Leah. She's a free woman now because she had children. Mutetis, and we trust her regarding her own self, her husband. But there she ain't Labani, but Shimon's wife, Shimon is dead, they had their child, the midst of Yibum, had no rumors that life. Asuda, Asuda. We say that it's awesome. So what happens now? There were a couple of brothers alive, not just those two, but then um, let's say, what happened to Siabu? They were, the Ruben and Shimon both died. So Ruben's wife, Leah, and Shimon's wife, Rachel, both married their brothers in law. And then, who, um, uh, what do you call it? In other words, each one says my husband died. Each one says my husband died. So the din is that we don't know as far as as far as we're concerned. They still have a mitzvah of yibum because there are other brothers alive. No problem. So Reuben's wife marries a lady, and Shimon's wife marries Yehuda because each one says my husband died, and we trust them. And now they have a mitzvah of yibum. No problem. They married Levi and Yehuda. Then the problem was that Levi and Yehuda died. They came in and said that Levi and Yehuda died. But that, um, and what happens in this case now? They married Levi, and now they say, and now they say, and it's Yabu Umeise Hayevavin. And now these Yevavin died. Do we, do we go back to, do, re, do we reactivate the very first beginning? If there wouldn't have been a Levi and Yehuda around, and Levi said Reuben died, and, and Rachel said that Shimon died, they're both stuck because your husband died, but how do you know your brother was dead? Lepoil, they ended up in, in the interim marrying other brothers in law. So they're no longer like Yevavin, they became full fledged wives. And now that their uh, um, other brothers died, childless, do, do we say that they're back in a state of limbo? Because how do you know there were no other brothers around? How do you know that Reuben is not still alive? Or how do you know Shimon is not still alive? Because we never established that. So, um, and so the first time it says, they cannot get married back in the original situation. However, Rabbi Loza says, once they marry the interim people, we sort of, they, it's, it's a new identity. They're not mutter to everybody. In other words, it's as if they're saying the, the Yavamas are not in the place of Reuben and Shimon. They are an extension of Reuben and Shimon. And when they die, we're back to Reuben and Shimon. It's a new, it's a new union. And Reuben and Shimon is over. Levi and Yehuda marry them. It's now Levi and his wife and Yehuda's wife. And therefore, we ignore completely what happened in the beginning. They're now totally free. And we'll continue the Gemara tomorrow in Mitzvah. Now, uh, any thoughts about 